Welcome back. This video is to go over how to set up a waiting list job in Service Autopilot's new version three. So what I'm gonna do is pull out the screen here and go into the details of setting up a waiting list job. So if you're unfamiliar what a waiting list job is, a waiting list job can be something like a spring cleanup where the job needs to be done sometime this month, but not today, or it can be done as a, um, a job that basically has a start and end date, but doesn't have to have a particular scheduled date. So the idea is we want to be able to go out and schedule for optimization to minimize that drive time, um, minimization, that non-billable time. In a later video, we're going to go over a package job. And a package job is basically a series of waiting list jobs uh, put together in a package. So this would be ideal for fertilization with several rounds in different uh, time frames, or uh, in landscape maintenance, maybe a bed package where we go out and do bed maintenance um, post and pre-emergent um, weed control with some manual weeding for each month, but it doesn't have to be done on a particular date. It does in a time frame. But uh, this video is going to go over waiting list jobs. There's a start and end range in how we schedule that and set that up in the new version three service autopilot. So as I pull the screen out here, I'm going to uh, show you how this is actually done. So this is what V3 looks like here on the client screen. Now you can also tell based on the status when it says active up here, this is a client. If it says lead in the little orange button there, uh, you know they're a lead. You have to convert your lead into a client before you can actually schedule in this old system or the new system. So what you're going to do is go over to the left-hand column here to schedule job. Click on that. That's going to pull up the first screen in V3. So what we're going to do now is it's a little bit different. Instead of setting and clicking waiting list job, we go to one time. This includes one time or a waiting list job. So it, by definition, a waiting list job is a one time job, whereas a package that has a series of waiting list jobs would be considered a job that repeats. So in this example, this is we would go into one time because that is our waiting list job. So it's automatically pull one time up here and we're going to select a service. So I'm going to use the example of a spring cleanup if we have one in this account. And we've got one here. So I'm going to click a spring cleanup and I'm going to put the budgeted hours of say three and a quantity of $150 if we're charging $150 or $50 per man hour. Now, once again, just like a repeating job or a one-time job, we have advanced options. So if there are chemical areas that we're treating for chemical tracking, we can select them. This obviously would not be applicable for a spring cleanup unless we are doing maybe a pre or post version pesticide. Um, next thing is we can override the date sold, account manager, and source. So we're going to go over to the right-hand bottom corner here and hit next. As we go in here, who do you want? Or do you know when this job will start? Yes or no? So uh, once we go in, we can say no, and that is going to flip it over. So this is a little confusing because this basically would be set for a one-time job. So you need to toggle over to no. And this is the earliest the job can be done. And let's just say it can be done starting today, uh, but it can be done to the end of the month. So that gives us our start and end range. So when you're on the waiting list um, screen, basically, if you go without the outside of that range, the job will turn to red. Now, do you want to assign this job right now? Yes or no. So we can assign it if we know who is going to do it. And I'm going to go in and assign that to my residential crew number one. And based on that crew setup, it's going to tell me how many people, uh, guys and girls are on that crew. You can override that here and you can see the information on the right continues to populate. So under advanced, we have additional options of a call ahead. So if this spring cleanup required a call ahead, maybe to unlock the back gate, we could say yes. And that will trigger that little icon on the dispatch board and information. And once again, depending on the company settings, it's going to default maximum hours per day and the number of days. Now that is under the advanced features. Next step is going over to actually next. Click that and that's going to slide us over to billing information. So this invoice description can be adjusted. How would you like to invoice this job monthly, daily, weekly, or print in advance? So maybe we want to override this and do this for a daily invoicing. So it's invoiced as soon as it's done. And under advance, we can change work order and sep uh, purchase order and separate invoices. So it prevents other jobs from being invoiced with this job. And if we were billing monthly and we did this as a daily job, we would probably want to build that out separately and click yes. And it's going to give you the granularity to set up your billing 
and create that waiting list job. So the final step here is to go in and hit finish. That's going to create the job and we can actually review it now and see it on the actual uh, overlay of the client screen. So this will give you all the information that you need on that waiting list job here for the $150. So that is how we go out and schedule a waiting list job in the new Service Autopilot V3. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. And as V3 continues to add more features and functionality, Simple Growth will be here to continue to build these videos to show you step-by-step step how to utilize the new user interface and upgrades of the system.